Welcome to Sounding Fury. I'm Eric, his arms wide. And I'm Hugh Frank, when the walls fell. Today, we are going to discuss time travel. Yeah, let's start with the uh, the first one on on my list, um, Final Countdown, which is yeah, yeah. That uh, was a movie. That was a movie. That I was a 1980s I, movie about the USS Nimitz being sucked through a time portal. I don't think I knew that was a movie. I, I know the song, obviously. Is that related to the movie? Well, it's big in Europe. Um, I, <laughs> I don't. Know. I don't know if uh, I don't know if the song is in the movie. I honestly don't remember. Um, I'll find out again when I watched it last Tuesday. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, so the aircraft carrier Nimitz goes back in in time. Um, they actually contact Hawaii. They go back to just before the attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941, and uh, the people in Hawaii are like, "Well, why would they name a boat after Chester Nimitz?" Um, and it's and it's full of uh, all kinds of talk about like okay should we or should we not prevent this attack because what's this going to do is it going to change the future is it going to are we even going to exist anymore because the reason that we're here is to defend the pacific fleet and mm -hmm. against you know blah, blah 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 because of world war ii um and it's really uh, it's very interesting just the dialogue itself uh there's a lot of action in it too and if you like f-14 uh tomcats taking off from aircraft carriers uh all uh, top gun style um, and dancing around with uh, uh, ASX M four zeros um, in you know in, in kind of a very 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 lopsided dogfight. Uh, it's really the movie for you. So that's a it's a good one. Yeah, I've never seen that movie. But alternative history, World War Two. If you change one thing about how the war went, what would the world we live in be like? Right, right. As horrible as all the things were. If you, you would you would we exist if anything happened differently in World War Two? That's a, right. Even down to the millisecond. Mm -hmm. Yeah, had to happen the way it happened. So the number two or is this number eleven? I can't remember what order we did this in, but yes, a. I don't think these are in any particular order. Yeah. Um, well, the time travel movies—they're in every order, all simultaneously. <laughs> yes. And I just said anius. <laughs> okay. Avengers Endgame. Avengers Endgame. Yeah, that. Um, that is definitely a new spin on time travel. Um, I think there probably is not a person alive that's watching our channel that hasn't seen it. Um, and hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll make sure you've watched it by next last Thursday yes. in time for this. Um, but but they they have an interesting spin where they talk about you can't really change the past because your past or your future into the past becomes the future of a next alternate it's kind of the branching realities version where no matter what you can't actually change the past which You're is creating a new alternate reality creating a yep yep so that's that's a very interesting take on it um whereas um in other movies you know like we might as well go to the next one on the list back to the future Mm -hmm. There, it's all about changing the future and, and whether not whether or not they should it's about they accidentally do and then they got to go back and fix it and fix it and fix it which is you know, why there are three of them um, so it's, it's interesting you've got two different takes on the, same, on the same theory as far as time travel goes they're kind of the opposite of each other one is you can't change the past and one is you've got to be really careful not to mm -hmm. Back to the Future probably the best known time travel movie of all time I would say question so. Of, you know, if not... At least for our generation. Yeah. No. How brilliant was it? I mean, the whole unmaking yourself from existence, the whole plot is to not to stop yourself from... Per, to undo your birth having been prevented. Right. Um, right. Which is part of the which is part of the the debate in like if you go um, like Final Countdown, if you stop yourself from being born, can you go back in time to stop yourself from being born? Mm-hmm. But they don't really answer that in Back to the Future, I guess. But but because they they stop themselves from stopping themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Great Scott, <laughs> this is heavy. Um, but yeah, that's I think that's kind of the quintessential. If you think about time travel uh, movies, um, that's kind of the defining. Everything is. If you think about other time travel, well, it's kind of like Back to the Future, except yeah. How does um, it compare to Back to the Future? Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of the kind of the be all end all. Um, 
And then it, it, it it's a perfect trilogy. It ties itself up in a neat bow at the end. Um, you get a character arc. Everybody gets flushed out. You know what happens. There's a finality to it. Even though there's time travel in it, you know that that's the end of the story. Brilliant, brilliant trilogy. Yeah. It's also the first the first movies that really addressed having an alternate branch too the mm-hmm. whole the alternate Biff 1985 branch of time and being mm-hmm. able to go back in time to f- to fix you know that particular thing so even in the first movie there are a bit of an alternate timeline he goes to he goes back to the future only to find his family in a better situation his dad's less of a wuss yeah. things are a little bit better Biff is kind of tamed you know and controlled um, it is already an alternate timeline right that's true. Mm-hmm. That's true, but of course, in Back to the Future Two, it turns dark in a very interesting way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent movie. Yep. So, what's next? Um, so, next on my list is one called About Time. Um, this oh, it's one about time he got to this one. It is about time. Well, I think I already did. <laughs> We're wearing that one out, or did we? <laughs> did we already wear that one out, or are we about to? We um, wore the video out on the next video that we filmed first. Okay, that's true. <laughs> Gotta get back. Oh no, I've time. gone cross eyed. <laughs> um, so, About Time is a Netflix flick. Um, and I it, have not seen this one. Yeah, it, it's it's very interesting in that it's, um, it, it's a, about a character that can. All the men in his family are able to travel back in time in their own lifetime and change different things. So, he uses it to try to, to get a girlfriend. Um, and he ends up like messing up a couple times, and he can go back and do it, kind of like Groundhog's Day, okay. which I guess is technically a time travel yeah. movie too. You travel back in time one day over and over. Yeah, that's not on our list, but that's a good one. Yeah, um, and it's kind of like that, except he doesn't he isn't forced to relive it. He just has the opportunity to go back and oh, I shouldn't have said that, or oh, I should have done this differently. Which is kind of from a guy's perspective, how many times as a guy have you wanted to go back in time and say something different, you know, mm-hmm. kind of thing. So. Um, so that's a that's a good one, and I won't spoil too much about it. It's on Netflix. Go watch it. It's it's uh, it's very interesting, um, but it's it's very uh, guy perspective ish. I think um, it's it's like a rom com for guys. I hmm. think. Yeah, not too many of those. No, not too many. Hmm. This should surprise no one, but Star Trek made our list of time travel properties. Dun dun dun! <laughs> I'm surprised that, that we didn't get to that one in time. <laughs> we did. Oh yeah, we did. Yeah. So there's multiple st- uh, time travels in Star Trek. Hello, computer. Focusing on the movies, everybody knows Star Trek IV and then Star Trek First Contact is the big time travel ones. Star Trek IV, um, this alien presence shows up, starts attacking the oceans. They figure out that if they go back in time to get whales... And that is the worst version of time travel in all movies, I would say. Because... Well, if we go past Mach t- or Warp 10 around the sun, we'll go back in time. And then to get back to the future, we have to go the same, do the same thing again, but go the other way. I suggest you don't worry about this sort of thing and just enjoy yourself. That goes for you all, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, just trust us, it works. <laughs> wink, wink. Yeah. 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 So I thought that was kind of, yeah. Wouldn't they go back even further? Anyway. So, yeah. But it, it was still, I mean... It, as far as, I mean, just that movie, just for the, where are your nuclear wrestles? <laughs> just that alone is worth watching the movie. I don't know if it's true or not, but I've heard that that was a candid shot where the people around didn't know that they were being filmed in a Star Trek movie. I've heard that too. And where are the nuclear vessels? Hello, we are looking for the nuclear vessels in Alameda. Could you tell me where... Can you, you help us? Please, we're looking for the naval base in Alameda. Could you tell me where the nuclear vessels are? Oh, yeah, and that was back during the height of the Cold War. So you got some guy that has a Russian accent asking you where your nuclear vessels are. You're not about to tell him. Uh, apparently there weren't many Star Trek fans in the 80s in San Francisco. I don't know. No, probably they not. Just happened to there fun. were probably just as many as there were nuclear vessels. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's great because it does a couple things story-wise that are excellent. Um, it... You know, problem solved, problem, they go back to, they, they, they try not to back to the future themselves. Yeah. They try not to undo their glorious, wonderful future, but they kind of have to do a little, a few things here and Accidentally there. Accidentally invent transparent aluminum. Which has actually been invented in real life. It has been invented in real life. Welcome to the it? future. Transparent aluminum? That's the ticket, laddie. Yeah. I think well, it's future. a future. 
I think it's a little silly that they parked the spaceship in Golden Gate Park and nobody accidentally ran into the invisible ship in, like, one of the world's busiest parks. Yeah. Did you see that? No, and neither did you, so no, shut up. I didn't see that. Um, and then Star Trek First Contact, the other one, very similar. They have to go back in time to prevent something bad. Uh, from happening in the future. Bad Borg, bad Borg. What you gonna oh. do? What you gonna do when, when they, they assimilate you? you? Yes, yeah, yeah. That was embarrassing. It was. We're, it we're, we're, we're putting this video on the internet on purpose. Yes. <sighs> or we already did. <laughs> Marty, you have to think fourth dimensionally. Sorry. Is that a decent impression? Yeah, not bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other thing that's great about First Contact is Zephram Cochran doesn't like what he hears about himself in the future. Mm. He's like, I don't know who you guys get your history from, but this Zephram Cochran person you hear about is nothing like me. And you know, Doctor... Please, don't tell me it's all thanks to me. I've heard enough about the great Zephram Cochran. I don't know who writes your history books or where you get your information from, but you people got some pretty funny ideas about me. <laughs> And I kind of get a kick out of that. And also they meet their hero and he's nothing like what they thought he was going to be. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. Well, if you think about a lot of the great people in history, just the day-to-day. I mean, if you think about the accomplishments of our most accomplished people, how much time in their life did they really spend accomplishing that one or two things, right? Mm -hmm. The rest of the life, the rest of their life, they've just kind of lived and were were people. Yeah. So even our greatest people were just people most of the time. Yeah. yeah, nobody thinks about it, but JFK took craps and picked his nose, and, you know, he's just ordinary days. Well, like everybody but him. Everybody except for JFK? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Happy <laughs> birthday. <laughs> um, and I could go into the TV show uh, Time Travel, but for time, we'll skip on to the next thing. Or we already did. Yeah. Yeah. So what's next on our list? Uh, well, we didn't talk about the reboot. Or the re, re, reboot, right. reuse, recycle. That's where Star Trek changed their time travel rules for the sake of story writing convenience, which irritates me. <laughs> In almost all Star Trek, it's the back to the future rules. You change the past you alter the future. Mm -hmm. But in the Star Trek 2009, all of a sudden you create an alternate reality. Yeah. There's the... F it's sort of been corrected in Star Trek Discovery. They have a sequence where they mention... Computer, open classified file, beta 4895 Omega. You're here, traveled forward from 2379 and across from an alternate universe created by the temporal incursion of a Romulan mining ship. Before Giorgio, Yor was the only individual known to have traveled across both time and dimensions. And I get they had to do it for story reasons, right? Mm -hmm. But the thing that bothered me about the reboot is, picture any other Star Trek show or movie that involves time travel, and at the end of the day, they save the day, they go back in time, they fix the thing, mm -hmm. and then this one starts with, well, this time the Enterprise couldn't save the day, so here's the rest of the story, which mm -hmm. I, I kind of get, but the, the point of every other Star Trek show that involves time travel is that they fix it. So I, I guess I'm kind of saying the same thing you are, except it isn't so much your concern is what the rules break. Mine's more of the, well, why don't they just go back in time and fix it? Because they have the entire future to do so. Mm -hmm. But anyway, but that's just that. Um, next on our list is Philadelphia Experiment, and I have to yes. be honest, I don't know much about it. I barely remember the movie, so it's kind of odd that we put it on the list, but I had to bring it up because it has a really cool concept. I really should rewatch it. Um, a Well, the Philadelphia Experiment was a World War II project where they're trying to like cloak a ship. Oh, and they had to do with subs. Um, I don't, I I don't remember. cheesesteaks. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so they're trying to cloak a cheesesteak? I know where they could hide one. <laughs> Sorry. Philadelphia cheesesteak. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Somebody had to come up with the right experiment to get the sandwich exactly the way it was supposed to. Ah, uh, yeah. yes. Yes. No, but there's a scientific experiment in World War II where they're trying to make a stealth ship, and they accidentally send it into the future, mm. the present day of the movie, which is the mid-'80s, but okay. when it was filmed, it was supposed to be present day. Yeah. And they have this World War II soldier, or sailor, I guess, who is... 
amazed by the futuristic 1985 or mm. whatever year it is. And there's this story he's trying to like, I, I don't remember, it's so long ago, but I just remember the fish out of water where he just doesn't get the 1980s. Yeah, the man out of time stuff. And that was fun. Yeah. I don't believe this. The Eldridge has vanished. Of course she has. She's radar invisible. No, sir. She's really vanished. But one ship did disappear, and two of the crew suddenly find themselves in the present. Maybe all this isn't real. That's basically all I remember about the movie. Okay. And it's a atrocious sequel, Philadelphia Experiment 2, where an American nuclear-armed stealth bomber accidentally goes back in time to Nazi Germany, oh. and then the Nazis use the nukes to wipe out Washington and New York and win World War II. Oh. And then the movie is like a modern-day 1990s, well, the movie is filmed in the 90s, yeah. where the, it's modern-day where the Nazis have won the war. And I think they, they like try to get the ship to go you know, undo that mistake of the stealth bomber. This is security ID check. Where an accident of history has turned America. VA day. Victory over America. 50 years since the Phoenix bombed Washington. Where have you been all your life? Into a dark world of fear and oppression. I'm here because here was not meant to be. It never should have happened. But I remember... I probably hate it if I watched it again, but I remember liking it. Yeah. Well, there's so many things like that. We remember we have fonder mm-hmm. memories of the stuff and we go back, especially when stuff like special effects don't really age well. <laughs> the Philadelphia Experiment 2. Well, tell me about Time Cop, because I haven't seen that one either. <laughs> Time Cop is exactly what it sounds like. He <laughs> is a police officer who is in charge of enforcing the timeline. It's illegal to go back in time. So he's part of the TVA. Which is the Time Variance Authority from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah, or, or in Star Trek, the Department of Temporal Investigations. There you go. Not to go back to Star <coughs> Trek, but it always does. Um, Captain Sisko goes back in time to the Captain Kirk Enterprise. And then when he comes back home, he's reporting to the Department of Temporal Investigations. And the whole story is him telling these investigators the story of when he went back in time. You're not contending it was a predestination paradox. A time loop? That you were meant to go back into the past? Uh, No. Good. We hate those. (laughs) So, what happened? This may take some time. Is that a joke? No. Good. We hate those. But anyway, uh, Time Cop is a fun action movie where Jean-Claude Van Damme is tracking down bad guys across time. Doing, partner? Ex-partner. Let me go, Max. I'm not hurting anybody. I've got to take you back. In the year 2004, time travel is a reality. There's a sequence, like in the American Civil War, where they they burgle some people of gold or something. I don't remember the... Or I guess it's not burglary. Burgle. Burglary. Burglary is when you break into a property. Robbery is when you steal from a person, so it would have been a robbery. Um, Actually, it's the threat of force, I think, is the difference between a burglary and a robbery. Burglary is a property crime, <coughs> robbery is a person. Is that what it is? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. It turns out going back in time is a pretty easy way to make money. I think you got yourself a shipment of gold and you're taking to General Lee. The genie is already out of the bottle. The technology is there. But <laughs> guy pulls out, I don't know if they're Uzis or what, but he pulls out some fully automatic, <laughs> mows down the Civil War soldiers while they got their muskets. Whoops. Yep. Yeah. That's a problem. Yeah, it's just a fun movie. And then I think he goes back into the um, his present day, and then things are all messed up, and he has to go back and actually mm. break the time law to change, you know. Jean-Claude Van Damme. Ron Silver. You get him! Mia Sara. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so how about let's talk about the time machine. Now, there's a, multiple movies based off the same book, right? Right. It's been adapted more than once. I think the most recent one, which late 90s, early 2000s, I don't remember precisely, yeah. but I think a relative of the author was a producer on the movie. Was that, who, who was the author of that? Was that like? H.G. Wells. That was H.G. Wells, okay. All right. 
Yeah, he turned a bicycle into a time machine. Goes so far into the future that the there's like the people that live above the ground, the people that live below. Oh, it's like an allegory for World War Three or whatever, and people hiding in bomb mm-hmm. shelters and stuff, and how eventually people would learn to live in bomb shelters yeah, and get he, eaten by. Crews. He goes so far into the future that he sees like the the, the end of the of the solar system, you know, billions of years and what have you. Wow, but pretty interesting overall, but. Better, I mean, I, I hate to be the, the book was a better guy, but <clears throat> it, it just, it's not really adaptable into yeah. a movie because it was written so long ago, it's kind of hard to put a modern movie stamp on it. Yeah. Kind of, same problem with War of the Worlds. It was written in the 18, 1800s. Yeah. And when you, you when you adapt it with Tom Cruise, it just doesn't. Well, if you do anything with Tom Cruise, it sucks. Unless it's Minority Report. I love Minority Report. Yeah. I don't know. It just makes me want to jump up on a couch and yell at Oprah. <coughs> <laughs> Is that that bad of a thing to do? Yeah. <laughs> well, like, apparently not if you're Tom Cruise. But, um, so, okay. It's a very maverick opinion of you. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. All right. So the next one on, on our list, then, is Kung Fury, which is probably the most accurate of all the time travel movies. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, Thank you for bringing that up. Oh, yes. Where's the tank? Thank you. Um, because it does involve going back in time to get Thor <laughs> and some machine gun toting Amazons and I believe some dinosaurs. Fuck. That's a laser raptor. I thought they went extinct thousands of years ago. And they have to go kill the Kung Fuhrer of Germany. Yes. You know, there's a lot of time travel that involves Nazis. They're the, kind of the ultimate bad guy of time travel, aren't they? I think it's because they're the ultimate bad guy, period. They're like the perfect movie villain because everybody knows that the Nazis, they're assholes and it's okay to kill them. Yeah. And nobody, nobody feels bad the, about horror of, Nobody feels bad about seeing a Nazi get shot on a, in a movie or, or anything. No. No, and just the horror of the thought of like what would have happened if they would have won, right? Mm-hmm. And so just you, you know, you want to talk about a, a dystopian future, um, you know, that's that's all you have to do is have Nazis be in control. Yeah, yeah. you don't need that spine. It's holding your back. Hold on, <laughs> I gotta bring up my favorite sequence in Kung Fury. Oh, of course, which is <laughs> when he shoots the Lamborghini door open while falling out of a skyscraper. Oh, there's so many good. <laughs> The evil <laughs> robot flipping off a dog. <laughs> it's just, I don't know why. Because that's I, what evil robots do. I laugh so hard at that every time. But anyway, <laughs> that has nothing to do with time travel. But it's just... It's it, is the, it is officially the best kung, best kung fu slash time travel slash killing Nazis movie of all time. It's like a scientist opened up my brain, looked in my brain, and th- what would Eric find funny? And then they made exactly that. Wow. It's 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 pure gold. The sequ- they're they're making another one. Arnold Schwarzenegger is going to be the president. <laughs> of course. Wait, in the movie too? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. <It's> just... <laughs> anyway, what's the next thing on our list? Interesting segue. Terminator. Ah. <laughs> That's right. We'll go to talk about the Terminator. Um, I, we may have um, we may have talked about the Terminator series to death already, um, but. Because I don't know how many different segments we've done, we've brought up Terminator movies in, but that's that's one of the um, that's one of the first movies that I remember seeing about time travel, where uh, instead of people from the present going into the past or into the future, it's mm-hmm. people in the present being affected by somebody coming back from the future. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's a it's a totally different spin, and of course, evil robots from the future coming back to kill Sarah Connor, and later on John Connor, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and so we would be remiss if we didn't mention them, but I don't know what is, what more is there to be said about Terminator? Well, we mentioned the Terminator is one of my top villains on our top, on our top villains episode, but as far as time travel, (laughs) we didn't really address that too much. And you're right. Um, in the sequel Terminator two, especially they try to prevent the war of the machines from happening in the first place. Right. But the time travel rules of it are very, 
not well th- I, well thought out isn't the right word because they don't really explain how time travel works no. but they definitely have their specific rules only organic matter can go back in time yeah which is why Arnold Schwarzenegger shows up butt ass naked um, yeah, they both and, do Reach yeah to and that, that sort of gives him a disadvantage he has to a get clothes b get weapons right. c then start finding i need your clothes your boots yeah. and your motorcycle whereas the terminator's badass from the beginning even right. even naked he can still kill you oh yeah yeah he, um uh <laughs> what's the, what's the guy? game over man game over what's that actor uh I can't think of his name, but he ripped, literally rips his heart out of his, his beating heart out of his chest in the mm-hmm. opening moments of Terminator or whatever. The Bill Paxton? Bill Paxton, yeah. 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 Yeah, I don't know. Most people don't realize Bill Paxton was in the Terminator for all of about 15 seconds. Very Died disa- right away. Very disappointed when they recast him in Terminator Genesis. Mm, I was just disappointed with Terminator Genesis in oh, general. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I consider Terminator 2 to be one of the franchises where you just, you just stop watching after the second one. And yeah. Okay. Well, the, the interesting thing is if you, they're self-contained as a duet. Mm-hmm. So the first one basically creates the idea that, okay, so August 29th, 1997, there's going to be Judgment Day. And then as the 90s get closer, um, you know, Sarah Connor is getting more and more nervous and wants to now stop the the judgment day from happening and goes you know they kill miles bennett dyson they get rid of the arm and the chip and all that kind of stuff so it's kind of comes full circle it could be said that if you just stopped there Mm -hmm. the first one because they found the terminator's arm and his chip and stuff it it created the ability to have judgment day and the second one stopped them from having judgment day so it really leaves you to wonder did any of it really happen in the end um, so they, they could have stopped there, but then, of course, the giant boatloads of money from the future wouldn't have come in. One thing that they never addressed that has always bothered me, and all the Terminator sequels, they never really went to this. Um, Miles Dyson, when they attack his home and then they explain to him, you're responsible for killing billions of people, mm. um, he was explaining the finding the smashed components. It was scary stuff, radically advanced. I mean, it, it was smashed, it didn't work, but... It gave us ideas, took us in new directions. I mean, things we would have never... Th- All my work was based on it. And he starts to say, things we would have never... And then he stopped himself. Things you're going to say, things we would have never thought of. Right. Well, if they would have never thought of it, who did? Mm. So I'm thinking that they in Terminator 2, they really only prevented the war against the machines from happening that way it just kind of reverted back to the way it would have happened so the nuclear war still happens it just happens later which sets up terminator 3 right which if arnold schwarzenegger never became governor it would have been interesting to see where they would have gone with that because in terminator 3 the war actually happens Mm. and i would love to have seen what that would have become so his political aspirations kind of curtailed his yeah he terminated the franchise Uh, terminated it and they tried to do, like, the War of the Machines on Terminator Salvation, but it didn't quite work. Yeah. Then they tried to reboot it with Terminator Genesis. That didn't work. Now they just kind of pretended none of the sequels happened and made Terminator Dark Fate. And that kind of works as a trilogy if you ignore all the other sequels, just Terminator 1, 2, and Dark Fate. It kind of works. At but least it, Sarah Connor's alive in Dark Fate. That was, yeah, that was but the spoilers, um, if they kill John Connor in the first two minutes of Terminator Dark Fate. They have like a CGI, I forget the actor's name, uh, who played John Connor originally. Uh, I don't remember his name off the top of my head. You can do it! But they, As a kid? Yeah. Yeah, not not in Terminator 3. No, no, okay. no, the Terminator 2 kid. Um, He's actually in it? They CGI him in it. Uh, uh, they have a CGI teenage version of him. Uh, and the f- opening sequence of the movie is a Terminator that went back in time successfully kills john connor and that's oh. how the movie begins wow that's kind of so funny. the machines won and then they yeah they prevented terminator 2 from happening but they created this whole other nightmare scenario where terminators rose up a different way and sarah connor's basically a terminator hunter okay it works yeah. but it's just it's just unsettling to have the movie you're so invested into that character have him die right away like that yeah same thing with Terminator 3, finding out even off-camera that Sarah Connor was dead, too. Mm-hmm. And you're kind of rooting for the both of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's their interaction in in Terminator 2 that mm-hmm. actually makes 
I mean, because you got to have a human story, right? You have mm-hmm. Kyle Reese and Sarah Connor in the first Terminator. They fall in love, and even though it's you know not meant to be for a long time, it's still it's there. It exists. Mm-hmm. And then you know, for for John Connor to get reunited with his mother, like, oh my God, she's not crazy. We really are about to die from a Terminator, um, you know. And then then they reconcile, and you know, there's that love story. Um, there, there's there wasn't so many, really a good love story. There's so much ones, potential yeah. in the sequels that just never was fully realized that yeah. it's just best to watch one and two and leave it at that. Yeah, which is sad to say. That's yeah, and that's kind of that's kind of what I wish I had done, which is why I never did go out to see Dark Fate. I mm-hmm. really should have. I shouldn't have seen Genesis, but I but I did. Yep. The robot, like the, the, the robot John Connor, just didn't make any sense to me. It I will just, say that they have some because like, that means they already won. So. I will say that um, Terminator Dark Fate has its moments where Arnold Schwarzenegger is the old Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah. is the robot that killed John Connor. Mm. What happens is after he killed John Connor and completed his programming, he's like, okay, now what? And he basically just lives his life as a regular person for the next couple decades, develops a conscience, and then starts helping Sarah Connor remotely, kind of as an apology for murdering her son. Hmm. Sorry I killed your son. Here's some help. Yeah, so she he like helps her kill Terminators, but huh. she doesn't like him very much for obvious reasons. Yeah, I can see why. Yeah, that would be. But yeah, it's it's best just to leave it at one and two.